think in the next five years, we'll see a lot more AI agencies, AI consultancies, AI practitioners. I don't think prompt engineering will be a long term. That's Sean Mellis, a former Deloitte AI consultant turned AI entrepreneur. Sean has taught prompt engineering to over 14,000 students in his highly rated Udemy course, ChatGPT 101. In this conversation, Sean explains why prompt engineering is not the future. He shows us where AI is really headed and gives us a look into future job opportunities and the surprising skills that you'll need to be successful in this coming AI revolution. Let's get into it. You can all kind of sense a, a tidal wave of change coming with AI. I mean, the last nine months, like everybody's been talking about chat B GPT, you've mentioned mm -hmm. it. Now, can you talk to us more broadly around what's happening in our world with AI? Yeah, so my parents talk about it now. <laughs> <You know? laughs> My, that's, my... A, that's a big sign. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's when like... your parents are, are clued into it, you know something's happening. You know it's different. Yeah. Like my dad, um, I was with my parents last night. They were using it on the couch, on their phones, on their laptops, their chat GPT fanatics. It's, it's not a representation of every parent because obviously being with me, I talk about it a lot. Uh, but I can imagine quite a few parents are aware of it or people from that generation who understand just how different things are now, particularly in the tech space. Mm. Uh, I mean, you show one person one example of ChatGPT, whatever it is, rewrite this email, generate this script or plot from a Seinfeld episode, you know, uh, something complicated that a Google search just simply wouldn't perform. And they mm. see the speed at which it outputs. I think that's been the, the sort of glass shattering moment for people to realize we're dealing with something on a different level mm -hmm. and it can help with so many more things than traditional automation or whatever you've been used to in the automation space. I don't think many people, to be honest, have been exposed to automation. I mean, I work with a lot of business owners and they're still figuring out, you know, their task management tool or yeah. setting up the fundamentals for their business or they're moving from paper to digital. You know, there's so many other hurdles that they have to get over and then they're presented this chat gpt tool uh, i think it's quite easy to understand the the value creation so it's getting embedded quickly into the workflow i mean that's where the world is starting to wake up to ai they can easily implement it now you don't need a technical background to figure out how to talk to chat gpt because it's it's simply a conversation which is very different to how to set up past iterations of ai yeah how how do you how do you see kind of what's happening in the AI space changing industries. Yeah, it's going to be baked in at every possible level to drive business outcomes, whether that's reducing cost of goods, increasing speed, increasing accuracy, increasing safety, you know, transport, uh, I think self-driving cars, the North Star, I imagine, would be like no deaths uh, and AI is sort of responsible for hitting that metric or the engineers behind iterating on the model, making it more accurate over time. But I think in the next five years, we'll see a lot more AI agencies, AI consultancies, AI practitioners. I don't think prompt engineering will be a long term. Uh, I don't know if you've heard that phrase, but for people you who tell us what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So prompts are the inputs you send to ChatGPT. Uh, you know, prompts, you start the conversation with a prompt, you respond to ChatGPT's responses with a prompt. They're sometimes called follow-up prompts. And I don't know who, but at some point in the last five years, the phrase or term prompt engineering has been coined as a way to describe the process in which you engage with these AIs. I think it's fleeting because we won't always consider the interaction with AI as a prompt. It'll be a conversation. If you've seen the movie Her, you understand what an interaction with an AI may look like. Mm -hmm. They'll just be a personality that you engage with day to day. It may not be your significant other sort of AI assistant, but it will likely be some sort of entity within your business, like the head of admin or the, the finance um, chatbot or mm -hmm. you know something that you engage with in an internal level whether it's through text or through voice you may even pick up the phone one day and, and talk to an ai who is the head of accounts and you can get any answer around when an invoice is going to get paid or you know when um, a certain event is going to happen 
and that won't be a prompt. You won't be a prompt engineer. You'll just have a conversation and the AI will be smart enough to steer you down the right path. Like any good colleague or manager or retail assistant in a store, the best salespeople guide the conversation with the right questions to achieve a particular outcome. And this will be the role of conversation designers. And conversation design is the role of chatbot designers. That's what we're called uh, because we design conversations in a way to achieve a particular outcome in the most efficient and engaging way possible. If, if you think of the best conversationalist you know and why you love speaking to that person, their traits are probably quite similar to some of the top chatbots. You know, they're, they're fun, they're efficient, they don't waffle, they don't ramble, they don't go off topic. Mm. Uh, they're, they're clear, succinct, interesting and engaging and yeah. uh, that's that's really where it's all going really fascinating stuff you you mentioned just in there a few uh, i guess opportunities like you, you mm. talked about agencies you talked about consultancies you talked about um prompt engineers although that 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 may not be a long-term career mm -hmm. choice um even conversation design i guess that's something that you're doing um and i suspect there's probably more people entering that space mm. of conversation design today now that we're seeing how powerful uh, you know tools like chat GPT are what what other job opportunities do you see for people with AI skills what what are the opportunities in this space that are coming AI in a company will be facilitated by people who are a bit more of a jack of all trades you know they need to understand different functions both horizontally and, and vertically and, and the impact of technology at those levels. So if you've got a background in consulting, you've worked with companies at the operations level, you understand you know, the role of technology, how uh, to drive cost efficiencies, time savings, uh, you, you're, th you're thinking more like an entrepreneur, uh, you're going to have an incredible advantage once you upskill yourself in AI because you'll be able to spot exactly where this technology can fit in. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's wanting to enter the space, I'd first recommend familiarizing yourself with the fundamentals of business, reading uh, a number of books um, or just querying ChatGPT, like what do I need to know about implementing AI for a business of this size? And it'll give you the perfect answer of how mm -hmm. to upskill. So I think for people who you know, want to take advantage of this technology, yes, it's important to understand how to be a prompt engineer and, and speak to the, the tool. But if you're going to implement it, whether it's in your own business, in your employer's business, or for other businesses, a consultant in general. You need to understand the, the fundamentals of business, otherwise you're not going to achieve business outcomes and companies are only gonna pay for this solution if it either you know, reduces their costs or increase their sales. I think something that stands out to me in this space is, is that you know, everyone will be in some way impacted by this. I wonder what, what soft skills do you think um, are key for someone that wants to work with AI and help them stand out? Like what, what other things do you think would be useful for people to kind of focus on? The first one that comes to mind is a good communicator mm. because prompt engineering is all about communication. I talk to ChatGPT like I would talk to a colleague that I'm delegating work to. Yeah. I have to be specific. I have to be structured. If you've got a complex task that you need to explain over an email you can't be vague you yeah. can't write a fat paragraph you have to use bullet points and numbers and you know brackets and colons and you have to make it look presentable for that person to read it and say okay I know exactly what Reggie is asking here otherwise there's going to be back and forth there's going to be follow-up questions there's going to be mistakes it's going to be merry-go-round of, of iterations until you get to the result you want. So with ChatGPT, people generate poor quality outputs because of the instructions. Okay. They're not going to the time to write the specificity required for the model to understand exactly what it is you're asking for. And this is where that persona design comes in as well. Uh, there's something called a system prompt in, a, um, in the ChatGPT API where you sort of frame who the model needs to be in order to answer this question. And system prompting is sort of key in any sort of interaction with the model if you're going to be building it into another tool. Like if you're using it for social media content generation, then the system prompt needs to tell the model it has to be a 
social media expert and so on. So understanding really how to communicate, I think, is is the key to setting up the, the model for success. Another one would be just really being familiar with the industry in general and understanding the terminology across the different systems, having a fundamental understanding of, of machine learning and um, conversational AI and LLMs, because you'll be able to connect the dots between why something that you've written hasn't generated the, the perfect output. What are think, LLMs? Sorry, uh, large language models, Okay. which are the descriptor for the technology behind ChatGPT. So yeah, communication and then really just, you know, fundamental understanding of, of the technology would be my recommendation. Nice, really good. What advice would you have for beginners who are interested in, in learning more about this space? I know you've got a, a, a course out there, like what other things can people who are, are you know, wanting to dabble in this, what can they do? Yeah, I would say just get in there and, and talk to it. Like so many people ask me, how do I implement AI you know, for this function of my business? I get cold messages on LinkedIn all the time, people who did the course, like so many conversations about this. And my answer is, mate, just ask ChatGPT. Like <laughs> it will give you the most detailed, perfect response every single time. Remember that this thing is a super intelligence. Don't mm. forget how smart it is. Like I've heard on many podcasts with AI leaders, they say this thing is a billion times smarter than humans. It's got a IQ, we, we can't even fathom. So consider the opportunity you have mm. to extract out insights, to extract out education from this tool related to a specific topic that can be personalized, whatever it is you're wanting to learn. Like give it context, say I'm a recent graduate. I just studied this degree. I'm looking to work in this space. I have skill sets in these three areas. I'm bad with this, I'm good with that. Uh, help me define some roles that exist today or maybe in the future that I could work towards. Give me a study plan of things that I should read or watch or courses I should complete. Now, it won't recommend things past 2021. It mm. will have access to anything behind that. And some sources may not be real because you need to build in a prompt that says, you know, do not make up any sources uh, to a really detailed level in order to sort of filter out the chance that it's going to make up, you know, a course or something like that. But in terms of books and like institutions or potentially YouTube videos, depending on how old they are, uh, it will give you a plan to, to mm. get started. So, um, yeah, jump in and, and sort of converse with the tool. And if there's anything in there you want more information on, you just say, can you expand on step number three? Mm. Uh, and then it will give you another essay long sort of description. And then you can say, can you expand on this particular point? And you can just go down this rabbit hole of personalized answers every single time um, you interact with it, which is the power of how efficient it can teach. Otherwise, if I recommend five books, it's going to take you two or three months to read. You're, you're not going to remember 80% of the stuff. You're going to have a few notes in your journal, which you then have to somehow act on to, you know, get started. But ChatGPT, you know, you've got this back and forth ability to, to drill down, to tell it to explain the topic like you're five or 10 or 15 years old, to explain it in French if you're a you know, native French speaker or explain it in a particular style of language, whatever it is, you've just got that opportunity and it's just so rare to learn like that. And I wow. highly encourage people to, to give that a go. That's really, that's really exciting. You, you're a big advocate for using the tool to actually learn how to use the tool. Um, can you tell our listeners, what, what kind of information do you present in your course? What kind of things can they expect to learn on your course? Which, uh, like I mentioned before, is actually a um, really successful course. Like you, you've got um, quite a number of students on there um, and, and lots of really good ratings. So um, what can we learn from, from the course that you've put out there? Yeah, thank you. So I wanted the course to be as practical as possible. Every lecture is a combination of a demonstration and screen share of some sort of framework or process that I've designed alongside ChatGPT. Foundationally, it covers the, the art of prompt engineering, you know, what you need to consider when drafting that initial prompt, you know, how to um, 
help the model take on a persona, how to use specific verbs to enhance the, the output, how to really craft the prompt in a way that's going to generate you know the closest response possible to, to whatever it is you're looking for. So that's sort of the first half of the course is the framework of how to draft your prompts. And then the second half, I go into uh, really practical examples across work and personal use cases. So work, it might be email communication, uh, drafting um, sort of a financial budget, um, content creation, uh, anything related to running a business or being an employee. Two or 300 different examples. I don't present them all, but I also include a Notion database of prompt examples that you can use uh, within these different use cases. So there's 700 prompts included in the course, I believe. And then the last module is personal use cases. So we do some fun ones like, you know, how to have a difficult conversation with your spouse. You know, mm. if you've got uh, a, a, a sticky sort of situation that you need to overcome, it can help you simulate a conversation or give you talking points or give you the best practice for having difficult conversations from the best books and advice out there. Um, I also talk about you know, um, fitness, you know, how to put together a, a fitness plan or a meal plan or uh, how to use it as a travel guide, you know, things like that that people may not be thinking about because all their friends have just told them about their business use cases. But remember, this thing is infinitely smart. So mm. any field, it has an IQ of, I don't know, 300 and just as an example. So if you want to talk about it, something super specific uh, that you think no one else would know about and that you're an expert in, you've read all the books in, trust me, it's read 10,000 more books. And wow. uh, you should f have that frame of mind when going into it. Um, so that's sort of the back half of the, the course. Fantastic stuff. Sean Mellis, thank you for joining us on Sprint Heart Iterate Fast. Um, lots of really good content there, lots of really good ideas there for anyone who is seeking to um, upskill and uh, learn about AI and ChatGPT and, and move into that space. Uh, Sean, thank you for coming on the show today. My pleasure. It was a lot of fun.